Hello, my name's Nathan from 10 Man Customs of North Carolina. We've uh, been noticing we can't find a whole lot of information on the 70, 73 to 79 Ford trucks as far as cutting them down into short beds. So we're going to have to do a video on them. Uh, follow along. Hopefully you'll enjoy it and give you quite a bit of information. Thank you. Okay, the next step is to line out where you're going to make your cut. From all measurements we can take, it seems like 16 inches is the number to use. We haven't been able to find that number easy from a lot of other people's videos, so we want to make sure you understand the measurements we come up with. We've taken these measurements off of a stock short bed. <clears throat> what we did was we take, took a line of tape, which we don't leave on ours, and run down through here to make the straightest line we can. This line right here has to be as straight as it can be. So you can measure back and check and make sure this line is going to be as straight as it can be. Uh, I don't know if you can see the lines on the camera, but we can see them here. Another good tip is if you're marking on something black, use a blue marker because it'll, whatever, for whatever reason, it will turn red against the black type. Okay, what we've done here is we like to zigzag our cuts. This way, it makes, uh, makes it stronger. It also makes it to where we can save the pocket and get as close to this edge. A lot of other shops we're seeing doing this, they're cutting it right here. But if you cut it right here, you're running the risk of warping. And if you're trying to save a patina job, then you don't want to warp, warp the metal. You want as little body work in it as you can. So what we'll do is we'll step this back do what we have to to make this line back up to this. It should be close to the same within a you know, millimeter. And on the inside of the bed, we'll step it to where we save all the body lines on the inside of the bed. Another yes. tip I can give you is if you're cutting out a panel like this where you want to try to not to mess up the paint any more than you have to, is don't use a brand new disc. A brand new disc has a tendency to skate around a little bit. If you get some disc that previously used just a little bit and got the edges wore down on, they'll cut a lot better and stay a lot truer. beds we don't cut through the center of the bed to create a bunch of welding. What we do is we cut, we measure back from the front of the bed our, our distance, which in this case is 16 inches. Makes it a lot easier, it's a lot easier to do two plug welds in each one of these pieces versus a whole line and then try to line all those ridges back up. The good thing is, is if this piece of metal's good in the vehicle you're cutting it out of, if you get a bed that's got bad areas in it, stick it back on the shelf and you'll have it for later. We use, we use quite a bit of these repair, for repair packs.
next thing we have to do, and I probably won't film this, is get rid of the spot welds that are up here and break that loose and peel that out. We'll come back to you after we've got this piece out of here. I'll just take the air chisel off camera and knock these panels off. And now we've got our pieces cut out with the air chisel. Um, we are going to end up having to remove this brace. We will probably do that from the bottom. You could flip your bed. Uh, we've got ours on a lift high enough. We could raise it up and get to it from the bottom. We'll uh, remove that. Uh, I may show some of that on how I go about removing those. It's not terribly complicated. It'll take a, a belt sander that is made for... Uh, Metal, doing metal repair and grind our spot welds and just pop it off with a screwdriver or a, a, ch a chisel. We won't use our air chisel on that because it'll do too much damage. The only time we use our air chisels is if we're having to do a rough removal. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to remove this underneath brace. It's got spot welds of probably about ever five to six, in some cases seven or eight inches. What we're going to do is we're going to use this air grinder here. You can find these at Harbor Freight. They're pretty inexpensive and they're really good tools. Um, and all we do is take this thing and grind the spot weld from the underneath. That way we don't damage the metal on top. So, here we go. Okay, right here is what you're looking for, people. Um, just sand through till you get about the thickness, or ju just outside the thickness of the piece of metal you're grinding through. It really doesn't take long. It took me about three minutes to grind all the way across this rail. It's worth the time to do it. So I will not bore you with me grinding all these out. And I'll come back to you when, and show you how we break it loose. Okay, what we're doing here, we're just taking a couple of the screwdrivers that's designed to be hammered on. Works a little better than a chisel. It fits a little better. And we're going through and popping these welds. Should be I promise you people, this is a lot faster than cutting that seam all the way down and having to weld that seam down the middle of that bed and, and grind it and make it look good. Now I think I'm done with all this, I'll have 10 minutes in removing this brace. Sorry about the momentary delay, children are out of school for the summer. That's not very bad. Next time I do one of these, I'll take this out before I start the process. Before. Here's a view from the top. We've only made one little old tiny hole where I didn't grind enough. I'll have to touch it back in. It's not too bad. And nobody will ever be the wiser. Over here, we still even got the recess place already stamped in the bed for it. All we gotta do is drill our hole and press something square down through it. We usually do our panels is we only grind back a, roughly about a quarter of an inch or a little over. And what the reason why we do that is if this person's going to keep this patina paint job, then we don't have, we've not done, done a lot of damage to the patina on it. Not a whole lot to have to fix here when we finish our grinding. But also, what this also does is, is if this heat comes back too far and this paint starts to bubble, you're getting your panel too hot and you're going to warp your panel. It's kind of a telltale sign. It, tell, it gives you a heads up, hey, you're getting your metal too hot. So, we like to do it this way, it works well for us. Now, if a person's gonna, going to uh, sand this thing down and repaint it later, it doesn't matter, then, you, then they can strip it off and it, it won't hurt a thing. But you'll have your little edge here that'll tell you if you're getting your panel too hot. What we're 
we're doing here is taking time to make sure every one of these edges lays in perfectly flush before we weld it in. We're leaving about a roughly about an inch gap or so. Good thing is take your little tiny screwdriver and kind of work. Take the time to line this stuff up. Sometimes you will have to go back and retouch your line. Good with a TIG welder, this is a good place to use it. If you're not, learn how to be efficient with your MIG. Use the least amount of weld you can to get the best penetration through the metal you can. This goes back to that method where I was talking about getting so much heat in it that you start bubbling your paint. You bubble the paint when you've got it too hot. This right here, it's very nice. The width of the blade's almost too much. Stick that one, get it up. Okay. Yeah, I've got a little bit too much down here. We'll just have to close it in. It happens sometimes. Best case scenario is you have a little bit of overlap when you put this thing together. and you cut back through doing the cutting butt. Okay. We'll come back to you here in a little bit when we've got this all stitched up. Okay, the main thing to remember here is just stay on top of your weld and as you get as your weld comes down you'll see it touch and just do a quick dress and clean up the, the uh, edges of it where the weld clean, flows into it nicely. In our shop we use a belt sander for a lot of this type of work. We like how it works. The main thing is use a tool that you're proficient with. If you're not proficient with a belt sander and you make a mess with it, don't use a belt sander. Uh, some guys use grinding rocks and are very proficient with them and don't make a mess with them. I like a flap wheel or a belt sander. A lot of times I will take a, a flap wheel and knock the tops off of it and get back with a belt sander to finish my work. Uh,
Now, there's a whole lot less cleanup to do doing it this way where you don't have to do anything to clean up your spot welds. The only well, it seems we've got the weld on the inside of the bed is down through here and down through here. If a person wanted to take the time to drill the spot welds out of this and just put spot welds back through there, you could. I did not do that on this one. I may do that on the next one. Then the only seam you'd have to weld would be through here, and that gets all your body lines back in order, as you see. We'll come back in a little bit when we've got it all welded up and ground. Okay, before I would forget, I was gonna show the inside of the bed with it finished out. It is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it is pretty good. We're gonna bed line the inside of this truck so we didn't try to make it all nice and neat and perfect, but we did try to get it as close to factory specs as we could. See, so I've even got the bolts back in. There's areas that were stamped out into it. All we did was drill it from the bottom and take an air saw and cut the whole square so it would fit. You see how straight that bedside is. It's a black bed, so it will show it if it's warped. See the top of it and down the sides. See how straight that bedside is the way we weld them in. And there's how our, our finish from our belt sander, it's not perfect, but we're gonna body work it a little bit anyways before we faux patine it. So. We'll come back to you here in a little bit when we get set up on the, doing the chassis.